Hey, everybody, before we get started, I want to tell you guys a little bit about our buddies over at Athletic Greens, AG1. I love Athletic Greens so much. I love them. AG1 by Athletic Greens, man. They're so good. They're so good. And this is the other one. The other, this is my wife this morning takes, it takes all these vitamins. And I go, how do you do that? I, I can't take a whole bunch of vitamins. I like doing it all in one shot. And that's what I do with Athletic Greens. I love it. I take it all the time. Every day. You guys know that. I mean, how long I've been talking about Athletic Greens now? Athletic Greens, it's, it's better gut health. It's increased energy. It's, you know, for me, it's the sleep quality. That's what I've been doing. The sleep quality is the best. You can do it right, you can, whether you're working out or before you're making your coffee. Whatever you're doing, you, it's, you feel ready to go. And it's, it's like it's the health kick. It really is. Between my, my diet that I have, which I'll tell you about later, and then uh, and Athletic Greens, I've been doing good. I've been, I've been having good energy. People have been noticing that. I like that. It helped me with my energy. And why do you want to take a whole bunch of different things? You just take this and that's it. You put it in a, I take it in a bottle of water and I shake it up and I love it. And AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better with having to do a lot. People love it. Uh, Katie Sackoff is, like I said, she's coming in on Monday. And I talked about Athletic Greens on the show and she loves Athletic Greens. And I'll talk, and she, I'm going to leave that in the show when she says it, of course. It's delivered to me every month, very easy to make it a daily habit. So if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens, it gives you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. But you have to go to athleticgreens.com slash big thing. Athleticgreens.com slash big thing. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's Friday, and it is the big thing with me, Christian Harloff. A lot of great stories going on, man. Lord of the Rings. There's going to be new movies, apparently. Warner Brothers trying to get out of debt. So we'll, we'll talk about that. We've got a special interview with Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania's Katie O'Brien that I'm going to show a little later. But I'm excited today because on the show, joining me are two friends of mine. I got Brian Monarch, who I've known for a long time. We just figured out exactly how. And, uh, and then Joe Godet, who I've, no, who I've not really met in person, but I've just heard so many great things from, whether it was from Jamie Costa or from Josh Robert Thompson. And, man, I know people always said, you know, when I was on Collider that, oh, you're, Arnold's good. It's garbage compared to this guy. This guy <laughs> is Arnold. And I'm, I'm excited to talk to him about a, a lot of different other things. But they've been collaborating together, making some hilarious content on whether it's TikTok and Instagram, Twitter, and all that, and we'll get into it. But before we do any of that, guys, if you haven't already done it, Spotify, we're doing video now. One of the few shows right now doing video. A lot of people are going to start jumping on board, but you can watch us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that stuff. Head on over there and, and do it. You want to join the Patreon, patreon.com slash the big thing show. Get yourself a shirt and show a little class. Just announce. Show some class. Head on over there. Do it. Let's get into the big thing, everybody. You ready? I'm ready. Cool. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's me, and I didn't lie. I got Joe Goddard here and Brian Monarch. What up, boys? What's, What's up? going on? How you doing? Good. Thanks for um, thanks for ha- thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Oh, and- sorry. Welcome to our studio. Yeah, <laughs> we, just, we just moved in. We got to just the paint is still drying. So with this with this rain, I don't blame I don't you. Know. You should you should. Uh, why would you want to drive in this shit? It's like <laughs> it was hailing yesterday. Dude, it's the worst it's been. In years, I feel like it's it's insane, crazy. Yeah, um, and where are you from? Connecticut. Oh, so you're used Boston, to shit. Boston originally. Yeah, but I'm in Connecticut now. I moved to Connecticut in 2016. Okay, so, so yeah, but still, you're, you're yeah, you're used to it. yeah for sure. Well, I was used to this. It's like it's nicer in Connecticut right now. I just saw like my ring camera went off before. I was like, what the? Oh, my wife's just getting wood. Like, it's, <laughs> right, it's, right. but it's like it's not cold, cold, but it's it's dry. It's dry. Yeah, I mean here it's, it's it was the first. It was like. A bizarre thing. I get my two kids. I get, it's hail. They never, they're California kids. So they never, hail. It's like it, we're used to growing up to yeah. freaking eight inches. Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from LA. You're from LA. Yeah, so this the whole is. time. Okay. So this is. He came out for a nice sunny weekend, and here we are on the worst weekend that we've had. Waking <laughs> up my socks <laughs> before us. <laughs> did you, did you um, maneuver the plan around having like a nice little vacation? Trying to. But like, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's going to be great. I'm like, what the hell is this? It's just soaking wet. But. Right. First world problems. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, do, you know? yeah, how did, so as I was mentioning kind of off air, so Brian and I were trying to figure it out because we thought, I guess you thought we knew each other just from the internet and, and uh, Ellis and connection that way. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought so at first, but then I was like, we had been 
whether it's friends on Instagram, whatever, too, for a long time. I was like, no, no, I'm 99% sure that you booked me on a show like in like 2007 uh, because I was remember I was trying to, I, we'd shot, that's how Ellis and I became close. I put him on a, I did a show with him and Eliza um, called Get Grassman at Straws, a little pilot that we put together. And I was, I needed a place to go up and I was going up at M Bar and I was pretty sure you were, you were booking it. Yeah, I was. And uh, I, who else was on the show? Do you remember? I, Eliza might have been on the show. Yeah, she did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it was fun, man. That place is gone. Is it? Yeah, it's not even there anymore. It's crazy. I, don't know what it is, but. I was driving around a lot of these places, and half these fucking places are, are, are gone. And 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 yeah, I was driving around the other day. I was talking to somebody about it. I was like, <laughs> during the pandemic, you look at all the massage parlors, and you know the only ones that are actually le uh, legit went out of business. All the other ones are passing out hand jobs and they're going to stay. Yeah, no more rubbing tugs. You know, the rubbing tugs are the ones that are going to be around until the fucking apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I'm surprised all three major L.A. comedy clubs survived after all that, to be honest. I am too. Yeah, yeah I am too, especially and especially with the fact that everybody wanted to maneuver out to, like, you know, Texas and shit oh, yeah. from it too. So. It was in Austin. Yeah. But how did you guys, how did you guys wind up? Because you guys do these, first of all, if you, and a lot of people send this to me. I got sent it today. Yeah. Um, a lot of people sent it to me. Like, have you said, like, fuck, I, I made this. Yeah, and well, I voiced it. I didn't make it. Yet. I know what you mean. But we're, so we're, what we're talking about is if you guys have seen the, there's this shot, this, the scene of Titanic and um, what Leo is, is, was painting Kate Winslet. And these guys brilliantly put Arnold as the fucking, as Kate Winslet. And it's hilarious. And people were sending that to me. Over and over again, you're going to love this, you're going to love this. And I was like, yeah, I saw this on Brian's thing. And then rightfully so, Brian was getting pissed off because people were just like taking it and like reposting it without his logo in it, which I think prompted you to start sticking it right in the middle. Yeah, right? no, I didn't have it drop down. Yeah, so, yeah, and they, so, and he got Joe to do the, the, the voice, obviously, for obvious reasons. How did that come about? How did you guys start hanging out? I don't, I, I was trying to think about this the other day. I don't remember. It's It's been years. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I messaged you on Instagram, and I'm like, hey, dude, I see you do these awesome voices. Would you be down to do a voiceover for one of my deep fakes? Yeah, I was like, yeah. you're like, let's do All it. Right, I'll try it. Yeah. And then I don't, I, I don't even remember the first one. The first one was... Yeah, we have to go back and look on my Instagram or your Instagram. But the one I always think of, like, we, we've probably done 20, 30, like... And how many have we really? We have a lot in the bag right now that yeah, we're like rendering. Ten waiting to yeah, go. Yeah, I feel like you have a new one out like every day. And I watch every single one of them. But I it's love so that. funny to see the because we do switch up the voices contrary to popular belief. It's not always just Arnold, but like people just like what else you got? We should do this, 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 this. And then you see the comments. All right, dude, we're getting sick of Arnold. I'm like, but it's fun. Like. I don't. Other, at the other end of the day, like, I don't of care. Of course, well, yeah, I don't care. Like it's well, funny. What those people don't realize is, hey, what? Guess, guess what, asshole? You're not the. You're not the only person on earth. There's someone brand new discovering this. Like and that's, today, and that's why I repost stuff. You know, yes, you get a bunch yeah. of followers, and I'm like, hey, this is for the new followers. I've already seen. Well, shut up and don't watch. It's not for you. Yeah, 100%. Keep scrolling. Finish your dump. Wipe your ass, and then go. Like <laughs> and they it's, do it's, it. That's why we do it. Yeah, I think know? bridesmaids might have been one of the first ones. Oh, that's right. Because that okay. one, we I did like a cat collaboration. We got uh, Skyler to do Vince Vaughn. We got Cave on to do Owen Wilson, and he yeah. did all the Arnold, Ryan Reynolds, and Michael J. Fox, and then Statham. Yeah. And Statham, yeah, there was four of them that he did. Yeah, yeah. I was like, holy crap. Okay, yeah. like, yeah, I'll try so it. That was a big project, too. We, it, it was like six deep fakes, six voices. It, it took a long time. It's, it's awesome, dude. Yeah. You, who does the Rogan for you? That one is AI. Is it really? Yeah, dude, I just, I, I it's me. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, I just, tie, there's a, there's, dude, AI is crazy, man. Yeah, apparently. I wrote, I wrote my girlfriend a song the other night. I was There's this AI channel I've been following on YouTube. I forget what it's called right now. Sorry. Um, but uh, he tells you all these new little things you could do. All you do is type out these like lyrics. It'll create a song. You gotta teach me. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Dude, that's it's like crazy what yeah, things because because I, I said for ten years from now. I, well, I saw you and and Josh and everybody posting about this too because yep. as a voice actor, it's gotta be like fuck. I, I mean, I think you wrote this. I gotta work a little harder now. Well, that's what I, my own voice like, and, and people don't realize about seventy percent of the voiceover work I do and like. I have like my wife is obsessed and type A personality with like all right what wor what work are we booking what are this so I have like a big pivot chart. Does she serve? She's like your manager. Yeah, yeah. And you know I, I work with other people too, but she's like sure. at home. Sure, she knows all this stuff. So you know seventy percent of the work, and I do about four hundred different jobs a year, yeah. which is like I'm cranking these out, um, and it, it seventy percent is in my own voice. So that doesn't scare me. Unless a company goes, listen, we want to license your voice. Right. Use it, what, you know, any of our sparks, and we'll pay you. It might be a little bit less, but you'll get real. I mean, do I take that? Is it worth it? I like the creativity. But the celebrity voices, I do get 
a, not nervous because you got to constantly practice. Mm-hmm. But it's all to me. It's always if a human is doing something, it's way more impressive, way more impressive than just going. Type in Arnold. I have to go to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh my god, that is so like I'd rather do it myself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'd course. much rather do it. AI myself. doesn't get the emotion. Right. That's what I was going to exactly. say. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, because not. well, that's the one thing I was as I talked to one. I say about well, especially for yourself and Josh and Jamie, I get defensive when people say, "Well, they're impressionists." No, they're not. They're actors right. because exactly. get, because an impression. I do impression when I do Arnold. They go like this, and you know, you can. It tell sounds me. just like me. Right. It is like I'm here. I'm trying. I was trying to do it, and I figured maybe we'll do doing. But Anna's it's good. Like, like it's get not, down. But, but you're not. You're not, I, I, you're, yeah. not, you're not. You're not doing that. Well, but that. But that can't. But it starts because that's the whole thing with Arnold, right? You can't. You can't do it as a get to the chopper because that's right. what everybody does, and right. it's over. And that's when it can obviously. And as stand up comedians, you know, here comes an Arnold impression, yeah. and it's hacky unless you become Arnold. And you're and thinking like Arnold, the and you talk like Arnold, and that's yeah. the fun, like improvising in a character, because it's like, and it's so mad, it's so, I feel so douchey saying this, but like when I do his voice, I don't see me, I see Arnold, a hundred percent, I see him going, well, listen, first of all, I mean, I think it is absolutely fantastic, and you can see his yeah. whole, you know, I want to smoke a stogie, whiskey, Lulu, come here for a second, <laughs> don't fart, don't shit on the floor, oh, come on, like you can right. see him, you know, absolutely, head, it's like I can see like. He's speeding up. He's slowing down. Right. He's speeding up. He's going up. He's go- like I can right. see like a wavelength. No, some, you can tell, and that's yeah. that's the whole. That's what I was so fascinated when, like, yeah. when that Robin Williams thing came out with Jamie, right? Because oh, he's not he's not doing an impression. He's no, he's, he's, he, it was him. It was him. It was him. And, and then you I see the hate. Any, I hate the I hate. I wish I could do any celebrity as well as you do Arnold and uh, Michael J. Fox, and he does oh. so many. Do like, but I, I just feel so bad. Oh, I don't feel bad because these uh, you know Jamie's a brilliant actor. Yeah, but when you see the hate, oh, another one like. People don't, I think people are just, they're keyboard cowboys. They're used to seeing people just sitting, they're on their couch. Oh, yeah, I don't like that. Blah. Right. And so they don't realize the amount of preparation that goes into sure. the amount of, of, uh, of, of training, the amount of just, just you, you have to, it's a lot of work. It's not like an instant, the same thing with the deep fakes. You guys should have done this, this. You realize this takes days and days and days for them to render and get a data set of the faces. Like when he explained how to get the data set, I'm like, oh, Jesus, I, I'm not right. going to ask you for any favors now. Like, <laughs> whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Like. Yeah, and so and that's the cons of having a niche. If you have a niche thing, like people are going to be like, "Can we do something new?" You know, there's always going to be a negative Nancy out there right, on right. every post, and you just got to ignore it. You have to absolutely ignore it, and especially from being from doing this for for being in this space for as long as I have. It's like you, it'll drive you nuts. Yeah, and you just have to go. I think the most important thing you guys would probably agree is just being able to make each other laugh, right? It's like if you, oh, yeah. If, oh, yeah. yeah, if you're doing that, and he sends in a take, and you're just laughing your fucking balls oh, off. Yeah. Well, I yeah. we did with the what, what? I keep forgetting what was the one I I couldn't get through. I sent Kai. it. To, it was the Kai, the hitchhiker one. Oh, okay. just oh that, that was great. I went smash, <laughs> smash, smash. <laughs> and as I did it, I was like, I. it was probably 13. I usually can get it out in like two or three takes. Right. And I'm like, it's fine. And then you kind of tweak the timing. All right, well, yeah, I admit the lips aren't matching. All right, let's put, but like, and then at the end, I did it. Like, I can just see his lips. Yeah. And because and, I'm voicing, I, I don't do the voice until it's deep faked because okay, yeah. I want to see the new performance. Smart. Yeah. And then, but it's also tough to to dub over the performance of somebody. Like, if Arnold isn't going to say a certain thing, it's really tough because right. I could just make up something that would sound just like him. But if I'm matching the performance of another actor, but he wouldn't say. This. I have right, to right, right. get the cadence of the other actor as Arnold. So right. it's like it's it's much harder than just doing it. Well, it's the same thing with stand up. It's like people when you if you're up there and you're telling a joke that you worked on for the last fucking two months, three months, and trying out, but and yeah. someone's like, "Oh, it wasn't funny, man. Try something else." And you're like, "Motherfucker, I've been working on this thing for months." And yeah. it's like maybe maybe retweak it, maybe do it. You, yeah, didn't, yeah. you didn't. He didn't see how it went no. two nights ago oh, when yeah. I did it when I said it a different way. And, and they're like, saying try something else, and you just want to say, well, "Why don't you just try? At least I'm trying." Like I right, yeah, but it's but it's also it's a matter of that like just not understanding and not being in it, yes. and so and for being a comedian and also when. When did you decide you wanted to start kind of diving into this? Test tech has always been something you've been interested in. Yeah, I used to Photoshop a yeah. lot. You know, I'd put like my face on movie posters and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I was just like, I saw a deep fake. I had no idea what it was. I was like, did this guy edit every frame with a Photoshop image? What is happening here? Like yeah. his mouth is moving, every, and it was lower resolution back then, but I was impressed. I'm like, I have to learn this. I just knew I would, could cut, all these ideas were coming to my head. Like, what could I do with it? What could I do with it? And then the voice thing came in later. I was just like, oh, this is making it, bring it to the next level. Yeah. And we do make each other laugh. I'll send him like the new batch. I'll be like, check out these three clips yeah. for our next Arnold's. 
and then he'll be like, "Oh my fucking god, this is gonna go viral, dude!" Like we just it, have a good time. And it's it. true. I mean, it's. Yeah. It, did you think that the Titanic one would do as well as it did? Because that, no, that thing's everywhere. I don't think we. Th- I don't think we thought at all. Like, dude, Uncle Rico. We did Uncle Rico from yeah. Napoleon Dynamite. That yeah. thing went crazy. We were. I yeah. was like, the, uh, "Do we want to post this one?" Like, I was. Yeah, debating was, if we should even. I was one it. take. It was late. I'm like, I just put the kids to bed. I, I, I'll hop in the. I'm gonna get in the studio really quick. I was like half asleep. I'm like, um, coach would have put me in. We would have been state champions. Yeah, and then I, 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 all over these I literally just was like, well, fuck this one take, and then right. I sent it, and then he posted, I'm like, holy shit, yeah. like that went, yeah. you, know, you don't know. You just don't know, you you just, don't know. It's, it's the truth, I, even with these shorts on YouTube, I posted this thing on like Boba Fett, and I was, and for the first like, I don't know what it was, like two months, like 2,000 views or whatever, I woke up today, it's like 220,000, I'm like, and it's like, you, but don't, know. you don't know where it's you coming from, right. yeah. and the same thing, like I posted a thing about the Waffle House, I'm just like, you don't want to fuck with the Waffle House employees, and I did, it was a 59 second thing, yeah. Same thing. I was like, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I thought that one was going to do shit. So you just don't know. You throw it all out there and see what sticks. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think that that's why, like, the you know when that when uh, that Arnold thing came out, because I'll tell you, like, Joe, like they when I as I've been listening to our obviously our Arnold impressions forever, and I always thought like Caliendo had a good one, right? And then when I used to hear Josh Robert Thompson on on um, Stern, you know, oh, doing it, that 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 was the first inkling of like. This dude's the goat. Yeah, I, you could hear him, and he'd call up Stern. Is Howard? How are you? Like, and I would, I go, that's Arnold. And then I learned it was Josh. And this was like, I think it was, it was like 2005, 2006. It had I had to be in the area. I had yeah. DM'd him, and I was like asking him. I was picking his brain, and he was nice enough to just respond. He's like, "There's different techniques if you're doing it live than doing it over the phone." Yep. And, and I'm like, "Thank." You. And then I just became such a fan of his, and I, yeah. I was like, "Okay, so this dude." knows what he's doing this is art and then you watch him he's one of the most underrated oh comedians. easily like, and it, but, it, but yeah, absolutely i'm glad you said all improv too. i can't he's, like it blows my mind he is a riot i have my he's on the show all the time and when we talk we do we have a couple that we've animated where he's he was morgan freeman as mace windu and <laughs> and like he's just done all these different jar jar binks morgan freeman and like it's his he can think the same way you're just saying with, with like with Arnold is that he can think is that he's, he, he disappears yeah. and it becomes, but it's this like this fucking crazy, like mad TV version of, of these people that you believe 100%. from the second he opens his mouth. So yeah. the improv, I just can't believe, like, I just go, how do you come? Like yeah. the Reverend Apostle BG, that kid. Yeah, yeah. I always tell him, it's my Josh Reverend. It's my favorite character. It's my, it's my favorite character that you do. Did you watch a show? This pilot? It's Dude, the, it's I watched best. it over. It's the and best. Over it was the best. Like, so underrated. Holy gold. Like, I find myself yeah. doing impressions of, the, <laughs> of uh, like, yeah. that's when you know you're good. You got other people doing impressions. You're just, like, it's. Yeah, it's but amazing. I think, and I'm sure you're, you're humble. Yeah, I, can, I know you're humble about it. And I think that Josh would even say that like, his, his Arnold's great, but you have taken over. Like, you're, you're the, I'm telling uh, you, man, you're the guy right now. When it comes to, when it comes to that, like, yeah, it's, it's. Josh, a, is be, Josh watching right now? No, no, because well, I'm telling you, the reason I say that is because the same reason what you said with him. I can't remember which one it was. I I was listening to it. I go, Holy shit, is that that's got to be Arnold? Was like, and then it was you, and then I saw your other stuff because from the, like the Ryan Reynolds thing it was a, what is I wanted to ask you about. Like yeah. you have that video where you're doing an impression of Ryan, and then you pan over and he's sitting there. Yeah, how, that how, was, how did that we, come about? We had I I had done a video. I think I used one of the deep fake apps at the time. Okay, and it was like how to do a Ryan Reynolds impression. And I remember. I went, yeah. First, drop your voice all the way down like. Yes. And then I started doing, him and his team saw it. Oh, great. My kid had a, had a, it was either a soccer game or a lacrosse game. We came home. I'm in the parking lot getting groceries. And then my phone goes off. It's a call from him and his, his team. You know, we're doing something. Would you like to work with us? So, yeah, we worked on a project. And it hasn't been released. And I, I was telling Brian on the way over here, I don't, and I can't, I can't say what it was, but I don't think it was released because my acting was so bad. Like, really? in, I don't know. In my head, I go, I was probably so terrible. They were probably like, well, fuck this guy, and just like through. But you never know; it could be it could be released. It could not. It was a lot of fun. But then after we wrapped, we had shot that video because he was like, "I'm starting a TikTok. Yeah, uh, can we post some stuff?" I'm like, "Yeah." We, so we hung in his trailer and we shot the shit and did some funny stuff, and then we just posted those. But easily the nicest guy. Yeah, so here easily the nicest guy I've ever worked with. Well, and Brian, I want to ask you. So, like, when it comes to um, because obviously you're in. You've got a lot of this. We have a lot of the same friends, but you've also connected with a lot of that that crew that on on like the Rogan show, and you do a lot of stuff with Theo. You know the stuff that Theo and Bobby Lee and all that. So, in the same kind of question, because you know those guys, are they have you gotten comments from them on doing their thing? Because that Rogan, I'm t- like the, the AI that blew out. Honestly, that blew me away because I I thought it was him, either him 
yeah. or someone doing an impression of him. Yeah, that one was already. So there's this new thing. I think it's called Voice AI or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. And uh, I used that for Rogan, and then I created a Theo voice actually myself because they didn't have him on there. What the hell did you do that? Oh, I didn't know. That. I actually That's talked it. to the producer of his podcast, and he sent me all the wave files of his solo episodes. Wow. I just chunked it in there, and it uh, yeah, it spits it back out. You need a lot of footage, and. It, you wouldn't believe how many takes it takes. Like it's it's it's, oh, it's in its it. infancy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's not like you could just do it. Like I'm like, it'll say like in Theo's voice, but it'll be like oh, at the end, or it'll like it'll have mm -hmm. some weird twinge to it. Like I got to do like 20 takes before it sounds right. It's weird. Yeah. Well, I they they did it some kind of form with that for James Earl Jones in the Obi Wan series. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. because it and. I think it was necessary. It was because it, you know, in Rogue One, he shows up and he sounds like a seventy-five-year-old man. Totally. Yeah, I thought it's like, the same exact thing when I was watching Rogue. When I was watching Obi Wan, I'm like, this is not James Earl Jones without some sort of processing. And then I looked into it; they didn't even use him as the bass voice. Oh, like, they didn't even use him as a bass no, voice. No, he wasn't involved. He wow. wasn't even involved. But it was old. But it was old footage and shit, right? Um, I'm, not, I'm just talking about the Obi Wan voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, but that, but that, that voice they didn't pull from like old stuff. Oh, I don't know what they did. They must have used samples from old stuff and kind of, I don't know what they did, but they didn't use him as the bass. Like they used. Interesting. Either. Yeah. Because I, same thing. I heard it and I go, that's like classic Vader voice. Yeah. Right it's there. much better. And yeah. Much better. And I said the reason, but it worked better for him than it did Mark Hamill and Boba Fett because in Boba Fett, even though it sounded just like Hamill, it was, it, it sounded mechanical. It sounded because yeah. Luke had that thing, the power converters thing in his voice. And he younger. He was a, he had youth to him. The uh, so it didn't work, but the Vader because he's a bit mechanical anyway. Yeah, it worked, but I guess it's just a matter of mastering the, uh, you know, the the program. Yeah, I'm sure they take it to another level. I'm sure they have proprietary software at Lucasfilms that right. uh, we don't have access to for free <laughs> on the internet. But um, yeah, I don't know what they did, but it was apparently a combination of a couple things from what I saw online. It was amazing. Yeah. And so is that the t because obviously from the stuff you just mentioned that Ryan Reynolds thing, you know, it's amazing what social media now can do and get, I, mean, I can't even imagine you probably got a lot of jobs from a lot yeah. of your stuff right yeah. so because that's kind of your calling card at the moment is that you have this stuff and, and when they and, and you also you're on your many voices on your on a show right now right kids show i was is it uh, over Sorry well, to bring up bad memories no no that's i'm trying to think was i doing i'm doing a lot of like gary v's v friends okay i was like what are, what are we yeah yeah um uh, cause I work in so much stuff. I can't write. Well, but that's what I but mean. No, yeah. But like that you Gary V yeah. his team, they saw this, you know, would you like to do some voices for this? Right. Yeah. And I just, you bang those out and that's fun, but it is, I, I think a social media is not like, look at me, look at all no, the, you gotta use I go, all right, here's man. a calling card. Yeah. Use it as a funnel mm -hmm. funnel. And then boom, people contact you studios. Like I've had Apple TV reach out to do some stuff. Right. I've had Showtime. You want to do some promo? Yeah. Like what, what I mean, else like can back, you do? And I'm just thinking about this the other day, like back in when, um, I remember walking in the, to the main room. Well, coming out of the main room, so you're, and that's when everybody was booking fucking punked when that was going oh, yeah. on. Renazisi had just had punked and oh, okay. and and all this is like back. This is like again. I got made. I got made a regular in two thousand, the end of two thousand two, with like Ari and and Rick and nice. and all those guys. So yeah, but it was like, but it was when it was like the the stinky gym and and it was my my favorite time was 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 around that time, but. The audition process and shit like that, you go in, you either, you know, you walk in there and you have either a good, bad audition and that's it. But now you have a fucking opportunity to do exactly what you guys are doing because not only can a comedic job, because your comedic influence is all over your videos. You can see it from the, yeah, time, yeah. the timing of it. Again, an underrated thing that I think people don't look at is that, yes, you've got to put in that performance and hit the lines. Right. But it's his responsibility to go inside of a rhythm to make us laugh as well, too. So is... This type of work, something that you want to do also? Because like, I know you're, you're performing all the time. You're doing shows all the time, too. Like, what's what's the what's the passion? Um, I mean, stand-up is still my biggest passion, I feel like. We just were at the improv last night, actually. It was a lot of fun. We yeah, had Eliza on. Did you go up? No. Oh, okay. I sat there. I, I told him, I go, you want to do something? And I'm like, he was like, you want to do some art? I'm like, yeah, then the, the crowd's just not going to. Bullshit. They would have loved it. They would have like, loved it. They would have loved it. The heck. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was fun. I was there as a guest to just watch. Yeah. I even tried to get him to read the no phones or pictures during the <laughs> you didn't do that oh <laughs> i just was like it was one of those things i'm like those shows about to start i'm like kevin nealon's right there <laughs> excuse it's me it's amazing yeah um but yeah i mean i actually almost got hired by the south park guys like wow. they actually hired me and then they ghosted me it was weird oh I, really yeah for the voodoo studios that yeah yeah, yeah um i think that they had to put off one of their projects but they said let's talk in the new year i haven't hit them back yet but okay. um yeah I, I mean it's fun man I, I really like doing the deep fake stuff yeah. and uh 
I'm just, it, I like combining the comedy and the deep fakes and making these things, you know, happen. And we're, we're actually working on a project together right now. That's why he's in town. Okay. Um, we're doing a little uh, thing. So we're going to see if that comes to fruition. We're going to keep messing with that. Yeah. 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 So like, are you doing, so, because you're directing stuff also, right? No. You like, don't direct? No. I thought you wanted to start, I mean, you're kind of directing these things. I'm directing these things. That's yeah. what I mean. So, so, I mean, when you, when you look at that, because even when I was talking to you, like going through, you can tell when someone has a particular mind for things of how they do you're you're essentially acting a director for all these things right, actor right, right. slash producer but is directing something you wanted to do i guess if, if i don't know nah, mostly just stand up and okay. just making people laugh Got you it. know that's basically the goal with me yeah yeah running my shows i run a, you know two shows at the improv every week and awesome. starting to do the ice house now so yeah so it's all i mean shit see and you've been especially from when you're out here didn't you get did you ever as someone who lived in la because my wife has been basically in in california all of her life mm-hmm. She wants to get the fuck out of here. Really? Right? Yeah, she's not in the business. She's not in it. So she wants. She wants. What to does get she it. hate about this place? I think that it's it, it's not necessarily about hate for her. It's just I think she's just she's been here all her life, kind of bored with it, and she's not. It's not like you where you're like you know you're you're in it. You're yeah, in, yeah, yeah. You're doing all the shit. So she she just wants. I think she she wants to not raise my kids out here, which I kind of understand with that. We want to go a little bit more in the sub- suburban area. Traffic's no fun. Traffic sucks, dude. When I got when I when I was at Collider and I was. And it was my last conversation where we were basically like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't do this anymore. And my first thought was, I don't have to take this fucking drive anymore. <laughs> Hour and 15 minutes to get there every, yeah, every time. Man. It's terrible. But um, but anyway, yeah, so she just, she wants, I think, a change of pace, seasons, that type of thing. Where does she want to, East Coast? Yeah, I think she wants to go back to New York. But it's like a matter of, but it's also, it ain't any cheaper in New York than it is here. Yeah. And also, but it's um, but either way, it's a lot. Of, you, I mean, because I know you, you've got what two kids or one two kid? kids, yeah, two kids. Okay, yeah, because that's that's another part of it. That's another reason why you do this thing too. It's not just it's yeah. not just to for people looking at your social. No, it's I have bills to pay, yep. and it's a great living. Like yeah. I, my favorite thing about what I do is I make a really comfortable living. Nobody knows me. I got recognized. I, mean, I did get recognized yesterday. It was, but whatever. It was pretty well, fun. definitely in this town. Um, yeah, but it was just weird because I I walk down the street. I can coach my kids' baseball teams, soccer yeah. teams. Bas- you know, I can do all that stuff. Nobody knows me. I have a recording studio in my home. I, I just I just finished it last year. It's just, just full recording studio. So I go in there. They get on the bus. I record. They come home. Let's go to sports. Let me make dinner. My wife, we all tag team the responsibilities, and then that's that. It's the best. It is the best. I, yeah. I, I, I just do it so people will follow me on social media. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. But uh, when, when you're doing the uh, – because I always talk about how there's a big difference. People don't realize it with the deep faking and the de aging. Yeah. Well, I think the latest Harrison Ford thing, they actually did do deep fake instead of de aging. Is that tr- see? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to be. Yeah. That, that I would know make sense. Okay. I'll tell you a funny story. Please. When the Mandalorian came out, I saw the Luke Skywalker and I was like, I have to deep fake over this. I so I made a Luke Skywalker set that night from all three movies. I started training it, and I was you're supposed to let it train like six seven days to make it look really mm-hmm. good. It's like, it still takes time. This guy I know, his name is Shamu. Yeah, he yeah. got hired at Lucasfilm. Got hired at Lucasfilm. Yeah. He put it out like on the third or fourth day. Oh, he's like, no, I'm not waiting, man. I w- and I, I had it training while it went up, and I was like, no. Well, didn't he do? Did he do? So maybe you know this or not? Did he do the work for Luke on 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 Boba Fett? I think he did. I, I think, think he's he doing did. all that stuff. I think yeah. he also did Young Indiana Jones for oh. the uh, flashbacks <laughs> in the five. That's fantastic to hear because I'm a massive fan of him I, from what he did because I didn't like that freaking mandalorian thing they did because it looked so fake yeah. it looked terrible and then you look at what they did at boba fett and you're like holy shit that's some yeah. of the best that i've seen and i was like there's a difference between de-aging and deep fake yeah i think de-aging is going to be going bye-bye i, I feel like deep deep fake is just superior and it's just it's less expensive i'm guessing as well but it's also ego of the actor too right because you look at like the irishman mm-hmm. like you see like a 70 year old stomp with a guy with a 28 year old face and you're like <laughs> it just doesn't look right, right. And it's the same thing i don't want to see 75 year old harrison ford moving like this with a 30 year old face right, yeah so it, when they put it on like you look at what they did at boba fett they put it on they put the face on the on a young body who had the same type of body as mm-hmm. mark hamill same and they hair. do that yeah I, I hope that that's what they're doing for indiana jones i would assume they found a body double i hope i would assume because if not it's gonna look awkward dude just just like, i want to i want to get a of the more the fake muscle suit like they're really <laughs> realistic they're like a thousand bucks and they're really realistic i was going to give myself a flat top Stogie and yes. just, I want to smoke my Stogie. I'll, I want to I'll fart on it, it for you, man. That's like I would just, I just to do it. <laughs> Sit there, like I want to fart, and when I have my Stogie, I have scallops and bacon. The next day, let it marinate in your belly, and then you <laughs> fart. The next day, the whole room clears. 
and did this so fun and just smoke is the stupid flat like I just it's want, the best yeah I, like the, my favorite is that i'm such a fucking fan of arnold like growing up you know oh, totally yeah. everything oh, too. Yeah. and the, something he just did just now is the same thing he does like when he gets an idea in his head he goes like, like it's the greatest he idea goes, in the world goes, i know yes i know now knowing you <laughs> yeah. like he does, he's like a little kid ex- gets excited. he like picks yeah. his nose he goes I got the good one. <laughs> I got. The, I flick it. They're very nice. Did you ever hear Joe Manganiello's story about about Arnold when uh, they went to the? the he was. T- I taught. I I interviewed him a couple of times, but he told me the story, and he go I actually made a short out of it. But he goes, um, he's like, yeah, we were. We, it was after sabotage, so we took him to this really nice. First of all, he's, he's like, is it a nice restaurant? He goes. Let me tell you something. If you're wearing <laughs> sleeves, I would be disappointed. Yeah. Right? And then they go, they go, they go to the, the the restaurant. They're sitting down, and 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 this woman comes over. She starts giving them like all the, you know, the special. Goes, Stop it! You want something with protein? Look at those muscles. <laughs> and, so, and then and then finally, my favorite line I quoted all the time was when he, he basically he said they're sitting there. They asked for dessert, and the guy goes, uh, you know, this chocolate cake, whatever to it is. He's like, would you would like some milk with that? He goes. Stop it. Milk is for babies. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just insane what he comes up with. But, like, has he heard your shit? Well, we were, I don't, like, I, so the only reason I know he, I don't think, I doubt he knows my name, but I know he's had to sign off on work I've done. Really? Because I was, I, I worked for Big Brother. I did, I was Otev, like, every season they have this, mm-hmm. this contest. And it was Otev the Jack Jellyfish. Producers came to me. Do you, do you want we're thinking like an Arnold do I did like 10 11 different voices and I was like I think Arnold would be great but do you want me to do Arnold over the top or like Arnold and we did it both ways and we sent it to his legal team and I guess the sign off was this guy can do my voice but no catchphrases like <laughs> so I was like all right so you get in the booth so you didn't I, do I Mortal can, Kombat 11 did you no no but no I no 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 because he's in that yeah so he is in yeah no that was me Stallone did his own voice in that I heard. that's so great yeah. what a what a second run he's having yeah, you know, him. for sure. He has still, so when do you do the same type of thing that, um, you know, Josh Robert Thompson and Jamie, like Jamie's different than Josh, but uh, Jamie, Jamie, like will watch a movie. He doesn't have like an idea. Like, oh, I'm going to start to do an impression of, of so-and-so. He just watches a movie and then if it clicks with them, he's like, a, he's just a fan of all this shit. Yeah, this, yeah you have to be a fan. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't sit down and go, I want to learn this. I want, like it happens by accident. Yeah. Was watching Mr. Rogers like I do Ice T and Ice T came because I was watching Mr. Rogers and Mr. Rogers sounds like this and all the and I went uh, wait wait and I'm like oh wait that's I yo what up man it's your boy Ice T so you start to go right. that's by accident <laughs> and then you go from voice to voice to but you, you have to be a fan yeah did you do Mr. Uh, did you do uh, Ice T as Mr. Rogers no I should have you absolutely should yo what up man it's a nice day in the neighborhood where's Mr. McFeely <laughs> touching kids like um trolley yeah. <laughs> man get that shit out of my face but like I, I just like it's just weird coming up with stuff because you don't do it subliminally like the Michael J. Fox right I do that because my normal yell is Michael like whenever I get I'm like oh like that's my normal <laughs> sometimes exciting. I do hear it come out yeah like <laughs> when I'm like getting really excited oh, wait a second doc um no, it's like when I get excited like this is my normal voice. I'm starting to get a little bit more excited. Like it, it just it's a natural yeah. thing. So when I heard that, I went, "Oh, well, let me start honing into that." It does help if your natural voice is close sure. to yeah. the. But then you have to you have to do it. You know the cadence and the speech pattern. There's there's a lot of different. Well, stuff. Absolutely, and I think that that's one of the things. I and any one of the ones, and as I say, I do impressions. I don't do. I'm I'm not as good. I'm not an actor like like Joe or or Josh and and Jamie. But like. I feel the same thing. Like when these things hit, I'm like, oh, well, you know, you just go kind of go like this a couple of times. You do Keaton, you know, same type of thing. Oh, yeah, you yeah, can, sir. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. he always does that. Yeah, yeah. He looks around his back or something too. But it, but then you go lower, and it's Gary Busey. He's like, oh, I believe in the time when a uh, dragon's lair would come in, and a dragon would put a bagel next to a, 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 a Portuguese statue. What? I sat I sat on a rooftop with that motherfucker twice really? for yeah my uh, recently or before re- the this, accident I, I maybe had another accident but it, it this is this was like a year and a half ago okay so it was recent twice right. dude in blazing heat and I was and I've told this story before but I, I was I was up there with him because they wanted me to potentially do a podcast with mm-hmm. him yeah and <laughs> so my and they're like well, just listen to him and and like have a couple conversations yeah. i was like it's gary Busey. i'm at the time i'm going 100 percent. if this works this could be a hilarious podcast oh, so, yeah. absolutely so i went in there going all right so maybe he, he it's an act a lot of times it's gonna act maybe yeah, it's yeah. like 60 percent like nuts and like 40 percent like an act right 99.9 percent fucking crazy he's, 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 and 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 he's and he's up on and rooftop and he's and he, he's had this book and he fucking peacocked me it was amazing 
sitting there having a conversation and he's got this book. He's like Buseyisms or whatever, where he yeah, turns, yeah. He turns yeah, a word yeah, yeah, into yeah, everything. Yeah. And he did it to me like 12 times on the roof. But he's got this book and he's got the book down and he's, and, and he's like, here's one for you. Here's, and here's one for you. I'm sitting right here. Right? He's, and you, and you. So I'd like you to tell me a little bit more about what you think uh, uh, this whole atmosphere is about. And I'm like, and I'm going, he just, he purposely didn't give me that book. Right. It was fucking hilarious. And then he would go, my favorite thing that he did. He's like, uh, you know, so uh, could we like to have Don Rickles as a guest on the show. I'd like to have uh, uh, Danny Glover, uh, Mel Gibson. I'm like, oh, you, you did movies with him. You talked to him recently? About five years or so. I'm like, perfect. Okay, good. And he's like, is George Carlin still with us? And I go, no, he, he passed away a little while ago. He's, and I'd say, and Don Rickles, too. And he's like, oh, you should cross him off the list. Then. <laughs> so, I was, I didn't want to go back for the second meeting, but I had to. Oh, I his wife to. hit me up to be on a show. Gary? Yeah, his, she that's right, told me. Yeah. That's, that's I was cool. just like, can he come? <laughs> be, be, be careful what you wish for, my friend. So what that's, you wish don't for. Your, yeah. don't, you don't want to meet your heroes. I used to love the Ghetto Boys. You know the Ghetto yeah, Boys? Of course. You know Bushwick Bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was, was my dick? favorite dude. Yeah, a little dwarf midget. Yeah, was he a dickhead? I shouldn't say midget. Um, he... Uh, <laughs> He was not a dickhead, but when he drank a lot, he turned into a dickhead. Oh, okay. He passed away, but yeah. yeah. He came to the comedy store. He, I was outside. Somebody else was on stage. He goes, I don't like this person. I'm like, sorry, man. He goes, take me to Rick Rubin's house. I go, Rick Rubin? <laughs> I, go, I don't know where he lives. I got, he goes, I know where he lives. He lives. Just drive me down to Sunset. I, I'll, I go, what's the address? He goes, I'll recognize it. I go, dude, I'm not doing it. He, wa he gets mad. He walks across the street. Doesn't even look right or left, dude. Cars are just like, uh, oh uh, shit. Uh. I'm just like, he tries to talk to some taxi. He was so drunk that the guy was just like, no, 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 no. And he starts walking back across the street. Uh, uh, or just like That's all at the comic chaos. Store. Oh, yeah. That outside of that comic store, the, the amount of cra the craziest thing I saw, and I still don't know if this person survived. Like, I don't, right by the bar, it was, I can't remember what time it was. Big fight happens right at the hotel. Everybody's going like, and it's it's just a scrap. And we're everybody at the nobody in no comedians are involved in it. Just a bunch of people who were hammered, and everybody's watching. Like you know, it's, it's it turns into a UFC fight event. We're like, okay, great. And this one dude punches a guy, and he goes face first on the concrete. Doesn't brace himself oh. like that. Gets up, but he's kind of doing this thing. Yeah, yeah. Like oh. he he ain't he ain't walking. Uh, and, and but it was, but the amount of crazy shit I'm sure you've seen on that on that balcony. Oh, yeah. yeah. When did you start going there? Like, um, probably like 2008 or so. Okay, so yeah. you, so I just missed you. Yeah, it was like when Dean and Alf were managers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like that was a while ago. Dean. So I I told this one too, but like I was um, I I was a regular first. I did one of the few things where I was a regular first and then started working there. Mm. And I think and Dean told me I was one of the I, at the time the only person that ever did that. But you could get away with more shit. You know, it's just like, it's like, hey, change the awning. I'm like, I'm afraid of heights. Like, yeah. I say, are you really? I'm like, you can, you guess. And then, because Ingram always talked about it. Like, I would just drive out of the fucking thing. But I would get extra spots because you would get employee spots and everything, too, if you were there. But, um, but yeah, man, that, but Dean was, Dean was the guy. Dean was great. Dean was great. Yeah, he was nice. Yeah. He was, he I was, think he's the guy. They were, they were really hurting back then. And they were like, yeah. They were like, could you do a show in the main room? I'm like, I really just want to do the belly room, but I could try. Yeah. And then, like, 2011, I had this show, and I had Margaret Cho on. Yeah. And I had the line all the way down to the pink dot, you know, all yeah. the way down uh -huh. there. And they sold out. Pauly Short comes up to me goes, how did you do this? Like, he, they'd never seen anything like it that, wow. like that right. year. I was just like. Promotion, man. Yeah. Right, been yeah. running shows there, you know. It's amazing. I'm so happy to, like, because they complete 180 now with, with how that club is. And I think social media and everything has also improved that dramatically. Like, because yeah. there was no. I mean, podcasts were like a small, small thing, but nobody really knew what they were back in 2007, 2008. Yeah. And then it started to really pick up like after that. And, um, but yeah, they use that really well. They didn't do that very well back then, but they do, they do it very well now. And you kind of have to, yeah, you have to, yeah. in order to maneuver. But, um, all right, you guys want to talk a, a couple movies? Let's we'll see if, uh, what, yeah, let's what, do what, it. what you think. So. Are we going to do the Lord of the Rings thing? I didn't, yeah. I didn't know this news until, are they going to have the original actors? I don't think so. I'll give you what the report is here. This is from, um, Dark Horizons. They say that Warner Brothers plans a new, so a couple more of the Lord of the Rings films. So they said Warner's planning new Lord of the Rings films. Warner Brothers and New Line are headed back to Middle Earth as the studio is set to develop more based on J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit books. The Swedish gaming company Embracer Group, they acquired the rights to the Rings films, games, merchandise, themes, park, and live productions last year when it purchased rights 
holder Middle Earth Enterprises from the Saul Zentz Company. Warner Brothers announced during an investor call that it has closed a multi-year deal with the rights holders, and it allows them to develop new films. Now, they, they responded to this, too, this company, um, and they had said that, this, well, this is, this is from CEO David Zaslav, first of all. This is what he said. He said, we understand how cherished these works are, and we are working together with our partners at New Line and Warner Brothers, and we plan to honor the past, future, and adhere to the strongest level of quality and production values. So it looks like they're, you know, I think right now what it is is that Warner Brothers – was in debt. They were bought by Warner Brothers Discovery, who took on the debt, and now they got to do all the shit. They announced all the DC stuff with James Gunn, and oh, yeah. they're doing. And now they and they're, now they're rumoring around doing some Harry Potter stuff. Whether it's this new game that just took off, right? I'm disappointed with that start with the Superman thing, man. Oh, with the, the Henry After Cavill. They do the yeah. Black Adam, and then they do that. Like it just felt like a rip off. So that's so that's a great point of it because like. I talk about this shit every day, right? So, yeah. and I try to tell the people that I'm talking about, the talking to, that we're in a bubble when it comes to, like any, like if you're in, if you're with, you're in a comedy bubble or right. you're in a movie bubble, and and even the people who listen to this show, we're in a, we're in a bubble. When you hear a statement like that, it's like right away the, the you're like a casual movie movie goer, you go for for, for fun and, and just to, but if you're sold on this idea at the end of this movie that you're getting Henry Cavill, yeah, you think you're getting Henry Cavill, totally, yeah. And it's like so. I, I think still want Christopher Reeve back. I know. Oh, <laughs> you you can do it. I did, I, I did it actually. Yeah, yeah. I put him in the. I put him in that Black Adam scene. That's right. Yeah. You did. You did. Um, yeah. So that. Um, yeah. That's to me. They they do this thing. They put him in there, and it was a lot of that had to do with you know the Rock kind of going around the old regime, and then the old regime was going to dick him over. They had no idea to, that they were going to use him, and now the new guy comes in. And he's like, yeah, but we need to make money. So James Gunn, what's your plan? And James Gunn goes, well, I have this plan. It, it's not James Gunn's fault, mm -hmm. like because he's because he's got. If you come in with a new plan, you got a plan, and it doesn't involve that guy. It's the people who were lying to him, telling him that he was coming back in the movie later on. That's the one who those are the ones who fucked him over. Yeah, yeah. But with this Lord of the Rings thing, did you watch the shows? I did. I didn't like it at all, man. I I, I shouldn't say I didn't like it because I only let it, I only watched two. Okay. But I just couldn't go any further, man. I was just like, I don't love anybody in this story. I yeah. don't care about these characters, and I just. It was like I was out. So I didn't like the first one. Second one was a little better, but the third one it started to lose me. The second half gets better, but you're right. If you don't hook you right away, but it, towards the end it gets better because they 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 kind of go more into the. It feels more like Tolkien than them trying to do like a, a TV show, you know. Yeah. So, um, but this makes sense. I mean, I think that if you're Warner Brothers, you have you have the IP and, you, and you're able to buy it over. And the question is, is it going to be any good? Because what are they going to base it off of? Yeah, what do they get? What do they have left to tell? Right. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about more are you, than anything. Have you fans of any of this stuff? Yeah. The, the Lord of the Rings stuff? Yeah. I used to watch them all the time. Like, all the, like my brother, we were in college when they yeah. came out. And I just remember, like, they got the DVDs. And I'm like, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun to watch. I just remember, like, at that age, not really being into it and just falling asleep and then going, <laughs> uh, okay. But then realizing that, like, they're I mean, they are good. But I yeah. don't, like, I'm, like, a weird. It reminds me of Clerks 2 when he's, like, just. It's just more walking and walking yeah. throws yeah. the ring. <laughs> That's part three. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> what, what would they do? With these, like, would it be pre or would they more stories with well, that's original the, actors? Yeah, what see, would, but that, that's the question. So they I, just announce and they don't, they don't go, oh, we're going to have so and so back. Well, they, that's more so to the stockholders and everything, yeah, too. Yeah, that's yeah. to let them know, don't worry. That, it's coming. Look, like, look, look, Disney's got Marvel yeah, 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 and yeah. Star Wars and all this shit. And they're like, don't don't worry. We got other stuff. We're, we got two. We have all that. We have it's Harry Potter thing. We Now now we, we're going to make more Lord of the Rings movies because, uh, you know, we we people like Lord of the Rings. But if, if you have that show, as Brian mentioned, that Amazon show, there was a lot of people, there was a major backlash on that show, especially from token fans and other people too. And if you do the same type of thing where it's like, it doesn't fit the lore the right way, you're going to have the same problem. I think you got to get creator. I, I think you got to get Peter Jackson back. Yeah. I mean, it's all about the writing too. Like if they can't, I don't know what angle they're going to take. I mean, I'm always the kind of guy that just likes the nostalgia. Like if it was up to me, I'd be like, Get Orlando Bloom. Get you know, let's <laughs> right, get them right. all back, and yeah. we'll, we'll we'll make it their future story. You know, so we yeah. can see our, the people that we already love. But it'd yeah. be great to have those those guys back. And it's the same way, like you know, when they're talking about like that's why with Harry Potter, they said that they want to. There's two. One, they're going to make the Hogwarts Legacy series, and then the other one was that they're going to do that Cursed Child. Yeah, yeah. Um, to turn it into a movie and get the cast back. They so, need to. I would in a heartbeat. Yeah, we've watched all. Like my kids love the movies. Yeah. We love the movies. They have the wands and all that stuff. When me and my wife started dating, she was like, oh, let's go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Orlando. I'm yeah. like, let's do it. She said, we can't go. So I read all the books. I'm like, oh, my God. Right, right. I read like three books in my life. I'm like, all right, hurry, finish up because I want to go. Like, So she's like, we're on the plane. I'm almost done with the last. I'm like, oh, God. So, but like, 
I love Harry Potter. Right? Yeah. So Harry the, Potter. Week, remember they it. used to have Harry Potter no, weekends was, on like. You see, Star Trek was the one I couldn't get into. Harry Potter, same Which thing. Which one? Kid. Next generation or, or, just, or the, just all of them? Uh, yes, I'm more Star Wars than Star Trek. Yeah, I mean, not that you too. have to choose, but I mean, it's like, yeah. Like my Star Trek, my, I mean, not my Star, my, my generation, but like, or the Orville, I would watch all the yeah, like, People love the Orville. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's like, it's funny. It's got heart. It, but it's like a new, a new like brand yeah. of like sci-fi space travel. I just heard Trump in there for the do you do Trump? No, I don't do Trump. Because I heard that. I said, oh shit, if you, if you, did I do it? What did I it, say? I don't know what it was, but it was like that graspy thing that he's got. Because now like, I hear some. The thing is, with so Seth many people do, it's fabulous. So many people do <laughs> Trump. A lot of people do him now. Yeah. But like, it's like I hear, I'll hear Josh do it. I'll hear, uh, I'll hear um, James. Uh, oh, oh, why am I? I don't want to butcher his name. It, James uh, Austin. Oh my god, on SNL. Oh right, he's he's, Mike, sure he's the best. Like I thought he was great. You know, who, a lot of like yeah. that's all I hear. But, yeah, but, it, but that's all I you can, can do. do. I can, but I, I don't want to do me being the douchebag yeah, I am. I don't want to do them doing them. That's right, why, like, I see what you're saying. Like yeah, well they have. I mean, because you look at the. Do you know this this kid? This Matt Friend kid that blew up out of nowhere? No, I don't know him personally. Have you, have you seen this uh, stuff? No, what is it? So Matt Friend is, I guess, comedian, but he's his Trump, like it. He was he's been on. They they just, that's why I was bringing up with you, Joe, like how people reach out for jobs. Yeah, yeah. He started doing it out there, and and MSNBC had him on and oh, talk wow. and doing oh, really? Trump. Somebody hit me up with a really good Trump recently to do a deep fake, and it might have been him. It's probably him. Like, and he's got and he's got the mannerisms, and he does. I'm not even going to attempt to try to, but he, he with everything that he says, like, the way that he just kind of. You would listen to it. It's crazy. But he does Howard Stern also. Like that is, I think that is the dude. Same guy. Yeah. Like yeah. Spot on Howard Stern. Howard heard it. Put him on the show. Right. And now yeah, he's yeah, calling yeah. him fake Howard okay, Stern. I know that. But he's, he, and, it, and he like stops people on the street. And like Jeff Goldblum went up and did like a set with them and everything. Like as Jeff I've Goldblum. Seen clips. But how does no. he find him on the strip? How does he find I don't know. Like is he like, all right, where are they today? Right. Maybe. Where are they today? Is it hard when like, you're like. I I'm not going to make fun. I'm just saying like how yeah. does that. I feel like. When he, with a guy like this that does like a ten Arnold, a ten Michael J. Fox, yeah. a ten Jason Statham, a ten Ryan Reynolds, it's not. Like, they're not I feel tens, like but I think they're tens, but I feel like you wouldn't do an impression of someone that if it was an eight now because you are. Well, that's so what it good. is. A lot of people go, "Why don't you do this?" Because I don't give a fuck. I want it yeah. to be good. I, I'm like qual quality over quantity. Yeah, I can do. I can. You should do some Family Guy. No, I shouldn't. It's not 2006 on YouTube. I shouldn't. <laughs> You're, and I'm not knocking anybody who makes it. It's just not what you want to do. It's just, yeah. it's not what I want to, like, no. Right. Next. But, like, I appreciate it. Or you get the, oh, you, you no. get the, you get the DM. I do a good Kermit the Frog. Yeah, it says it like a million other fucking people. Right. Good luck with that. And I'm not going to say that to them because I'm nice. <laughs> but, no, but I don't know. I'm, I'm just weird like that. I, 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 I stay in my lane. I like to do what I like to do. Yeah. Um, but I'm not also, I'm, I'll, ne you'll never see me. And then somebody will find a comment on. Mm -hmm. So I'll never crap on anybody else's work. Right. That was stupid. You, if I think something, just don't even post it. It's, you know, I don't right. even want to put that negativity what out it, there. Yeah, because what does it do? It's like you can feel it. You're allowed to feel it. I can go. Yeah. It's not for me. Right. But I'm not gonna. That guy sucks. Right. I, I, no, good for them. If they're having success at that, yeah. good for them. I'm not gonna hate on that. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that's good. It was just I, as you were saying, I could I could hear it, but that's why I also brought up because I wanted to bring up Matt Friend to you because I. That guy came out of nowhere. I didn't see like his. Stuff. That's the power of social media. That's He's what I mean. About. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's why I'm glad you guys are doing what you're doing because like it is, the Step Brothers one like over and over again. Watching that one was that might have been the first one. That probably was, was that, that the first, the first one? one. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, that time I why? Because my Stallone is fucking terrible. I wish you had it's, the it's, ten. But Stallone. because like I wish my Stallone was good, but my Stallone in it's that not bad. But it was I I was do I was Stallone. Playing a John C. Riley type. Yeah, I was like, I was stupid. I was, yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. like, it, you know, the only Stallone I could do half decent is like the Rambo going, or, or Judge Dredd. I am the law. Yeah, right. I am the law. Like, and that's it. It's like crappy. It's just slurring. It's that's like it it, that's what I do. I mean, it's a, whether I'm. Because my again, it's like, oh uh, yeah, hey man, you watching Yellowstone? You be watching Yellowstone? You be watching my shit? I'm Paramount, right? Like, like, Paramount. He made the rock. I told on the rock. I fell off the rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see Rocky? Everybody got a big cup. Yo, like, yeah, right. I've been sitting on a deep fake of Stallone's face on Jim Carrey at the beginning <laughs> when he's climbing the mountain. Yes. And oh I've, yeah. Four people have tried to voice it. It's just. It's so hard to do. It Stallone. is be it's weird because man. it's just because you're really just kind of playing your own version of a drunk, and it's just yeah. like and eh. you want like I the way I, like I I want it to like also the person who's watching that yeah. not going they fucking making fun of me, but I, obviously the, this type of people can take jokes, but like if we're gonna do it, I want to do it and have it be quality. A hundred percent. Have you heard you've heard Stallone singing on, on Yellowstone? Right, uh, not Yellowstone. On um, what was the one he did with Dolly Parton? The one he did a movie with 
Dolly Parton. Oh, the past remember. couple of years? No. Or was it a long like time ago? Rhinestone. 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 Oh, it was Rhinestone. Rhinestone. Have you ever heard his song? No. Oh, uh, let me see. I don't it was It wasn't I, Frank? I, was it no, Frank? No, 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 no. I think I, I, I always hear. Remember, it's yeah. such a random cameo in a movie. Frank Stallone and Hudson Hawk. Do you remember that movie, Hudson no. Hawk? No, I remember the Hudson title. Hawk is It's one of my favorite movies of all time with Bruce uh, yeah, Willis, of course. Yeah, yeah. Danny Aiello. Would you like to swing on us? And then Stallone, uh, Frank Stallone, is a random bad guy. I in it. That he's in that. Yeah, I mean, oh. he's, he was in all of uh, Stallone other movies, whether it was you know the Rocky movie, Staying Alive, and yeah. he popped up. But he's in uh, Rocky. He's in the Doo Wop dudes. He's yeah. singing in the barrel. Uh, and yeah, is he in all the Rockies? He's in. The, he's the not in all of them, but he's oh, okay. he's in at least the first three. He played because um, he's I think he's like a sparring partner or some something in the in the third one. But uh, this is yeah, this is his this is his song. I love it already. It's amazing. You know, it's him instinct. It's when he starts singing, you, you hear it right in his voice. I used this clip on a deep fix. Oh, it's the best. The one where I have, like, Stallone's greatest hits. He shared oh, it, actually. Oh, did he really? And I started Unless... it with But while you created a monster. Oh, wow. And they call him Frankenstein. <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> it's the best. The it's the best. It's, it's so it's, yeah, it's and you you obviously you're familiar with Arnold's song, right? Oh, the, the uh, uh, what is it? The something love. Uh, okay. This is yeah, Will yeah, Sasso. Yeah, yeah. No, this is him, dude. This is him. Hold on. Rockin' body. Will Sasso. Pretty face. That is one thousand percent Will Sasso. It's not Will Sasso. It is one hundred percent Arnold. It's a movie. It's from a movie. In the movie, it's Arnold. This one right here it's, is Will it's Sasso. It's pulled from the from the movie. I'm telling you. I promise you. No, that yeah, that's Sasso. It's, that's a thousand percent Will Sasso. Will I'm Sasso, DM me. Right. It's one thousand percent right. Will. It's not. It's not Sasso. I'm telling you. The I have a good ear. I know you do, but I'm telling you, it's this, like this, this, uh, you're take, failing take, you right find now. Find the clip of him going, yeah, yeah the Arctic. Okay, I'm going to ask Will gonna, Sasso. Right, let's see. Right, I'm telling you, dude. I pulled, I pulled a, it from Will the Will Sasso's thing. a legend. <laughs> he should know. <laughs> Arnold, Arnold singing. This so is, uh, <laughs> I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Earthquake love. Yeah, earthquake. But they, all right, the clip, hold on. This is the clip. Hold on. If it shows him... No, 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 you're not showing all that. That ain't it. You know, well, they're not showing it right there. But I'm telling you, it comes. No, it's not. It's not. All right, we'll, we'll have to. This will. This, right, this be, be an answer in the comments. This is gonna have to be in the comments. That's that's gotta be Will Sasso. I'm, I, the know, reason, I know. There, I'll tell you the reason why I I'm pretty sure it's not. Is because, I because call bullshit. I, when, I do not believe you. <laughs> I do not believe you. Uh, you would, I don't sir. Was, being well, in the recording. Well, Mr. Governor, don't don't. Are you sure that wasn't you? Because everyone's telling me that it was you. Let me think. Yeah, it's Sasso. It is not me. Did you hire him because did you tell him no catchphrases when you did that this time? <laughs> yeah. I said, when you say earth, make sure you say like earth, not like earthquake, say earthquake. And he did. So we hired him. And I was smoking stogies while he recorded it. This we were is Whiskey it. and Lulu at that time. They were shitting all over the floor. Right. And eating cookies and biscuits. Do you clean up your own shit from the donkeys? No. I do not clean it up. No. I make them eat it. I train them because there's protein and all of the shit all over the floor. Especially when they have diarrhea, it is always liquid form, and then they add a little bit of uh, peppermint schnapps. Right, of course. As you know. Absolutely. One egg, stick it in the blender again, yeah, right. and then drink it up. <laughs> yeah. Because it's pre-workout. Right. It, it kills you, but, I mean, you feel good when you're dying. Well, you hear it. Yeah. Confirmed here. It was Will Sasso, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Either way, two classic songs by both Arnie and, and Sly. How crazy was their fucking feud that they had? It's funny, man. Yeah. It's still we're actually doing uh, one right now. Uh, it's going to be like showing both of them talking crap about each other oh, on great. late night. Yes. Talking about how uh, he made him Stop for my mama's shoot. Yeah. It's the best. And that, we're, we put Arnold in the movie. Yeah, oh, did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, it's going to be so good. good. Stop. Uh, I'm a mama shoot. <laughs> <laughs> the, the clip with Stallone where he's singing, is he yeah. like in a cowboy hat yeah. going like this with a guitar? Yeah. yeah, I put that at the beginning of the Stallone's Greatest Hits video. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah it's a, it, you, I'm telling you, go to Brian's page, man, and watch all this stuff that him and Joe did. And you mean, you, whether it's Twitter or, or Instagram, it's just amazing stuff. I can't even, I'm, again, I'm not even exaggerating when I tell you, like, at least 50 times people have, have sent me that, the Titanic one. That feels good. Yeah. All, 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 I mean, again, it's like today, literally this morning, there was someone who was like, you know, hey, hey, I figure you love this. And I said, well, my buddy Brian did that and Joe's coming oh, on. That was the one you tweeted out. Yeah, this yeah, morning. yeah, yeah. That was yeah. this morning. That's yeah. Good. So it was yeah, nuts. That's awesome. Um, By right. the way, you asked earlier if Schwarzenegger's heard his thing. Um, he just liked a tweet 
two days ago of uh, that I put out of one of our deep fakes. The Kenny, oh. the Kenny po- out, out of all of, of them, all it was of them, the, the Kenny crudest one, one we've ever made. <laughs> But that's probably his sense of humor. Probably. Yeah, I mean, he's like, "Oh, I love this." He probably loves absolutely. It's my, you've you've read this through that Entertainment Weekly report, like that came out in like two thousand about him, like oh, when when it was right when his movies weren't doing like yeah. he wasn't that big box, so he wasn't as protected anymore. Yeah, so like, what, and then well, Last Action Hero that. still, that, yeah, it was it was a little movie. bit. Oh, that, I, love that I think movie. it was was a little ahead of its time to be honest. That movie, but you no, know, it was when he started doing like a racer and all those things. Oh, and it was yeah, like yeah. it was right before he stopped and went to be the governor because they yeah. had this. Big freaking article that came out, and my favorite story ever that I believe one hundred percent is when he said he, you know, he'd be with all these different women, and, and he walked and he walked into this room, and he was going down on this check, and he looks up, he goes, "Come on, eating is not cheating," and and the guy's like, "I couldn't believe it. he said." He's like, "I'm gonna be honest, I laughed when he, when he when he." I read that when he met his wife, he said, "You have a nice ass." That was the first thing he ever said to her. If you look, yeah, if you look at if you go back and you watch him on uh, on freaking Pumping Iron, oh yeah, I mean he's classic in there. He's not and and. And then yeah, it was it was it was eating is not cheating, it was the one and he's it's, it's other a bumper t- sticker. Yeah, oh, absolutely, it <laughs> you're, is. You're at a stoplight. Eating is not cheating. <laughs> okay, <laughs> at the light, take a right. right, right. <laughs> I would. I mean, yes. And then you have you know, uh, the Michael J. Fox. I think yours is by the way is is very is is. Because Arnold obviously is so amazing. Yeah. As, as Brian said, Michael J. Fox is ten as well too, the, man. The, the contrast between I think I, I like doing voices that contrast. Yeah. So, like, I, I had a series. It wasn't a I'm fucking stupid, but I think I would do on TikTok. I mm-hmm. made multiple. It was Michael J. Fox, you know. And now things Arnold Schwarzenegger would never say, but I'll say it because I can do his voice. So good. And then they hear that. And then you go into this. And right. they go, oh, shit. Like, right. the, it's like a magic trick with your ears. You get used to this. Nah, because I can do his voice. Hey, well, let me tell you, right? We're going to start a new Italian cuisine restaurant inspired by Terminator, and we call it Pasta La Vista. You know, just and then going to stupid stuff like that. We yeah. put him on, uh, we put Michael J. Fox's voice over the Independence Day speech, and oh, the guy's yeah. hair, who plays the president? Bill Pullman. Pullman. Yeah, his hair is just like Michael J. Fox's. It looks really It worked good. well. It worked so you got to well. do that one again, just that scene, rather than having the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that'll be good. it will be great. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him for sure. And then. You know, as I mentioned with the Lord of the Rings thing, I do want to bring, you know what I'm going to do first before we do that? I want to throw you guys and tell you about, you know, Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. You guys know the movie's out and the Mandalorian's coming out. Well, we had Katie O'Brien on the show and we have Katie Sackoff on Monday, by the way. So you make sure you listen to that one. But Katie, I want to show you real quick. Katie O'Brien, talk to her about Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. And I want you guys to see it. Take a look. All right. What's up, everybody? As I mentioned, I am very excited to have my next guest here. You know her from... The, the number one movie in America right now, ladies and gentlemen, is Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. And if you watch my shows enough, you know how much I talk about The Mandalorian. You know that it is, to me, the best Star Wars type material since the original trilogy. It is just incredible. So that's why I'm excited to talk to my next guest, who is in both of those things. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Katie O'Brien. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's nice to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's fun. Um, I was telling you off air that I um I had taken my my daughter to see Ant Man and the Lost Quantum Mania, and it was funny because she had said to me, as I mentioned to you, she's like, Dad, it's like this is a Star Wars movie inside of a Marvel movie, and it had that feeling. Who directed the episode? The episodes that you were on for Mandalorian because it ties into the Marvel for me. Yeah, I had. Um I mean, the last two that I was in were Peyton. Right. Yeah. So right. he directed Ant Man as well. So that's, yeah. and that's why. So, what was, did you get a chance to, like, you know, when you're talking to him a lot, is that what kind of opened up the door here for? I mean, obviously, you have the relationship with, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and then working on, on Mandalorian in general. But, and then how does that come about in, on the set of Mandalorian, the, the relationship with Peyton? Oh, actually, it was just the last episode. Nothing. But sorry, I don't want to take other people's credit away. Yeah. Um, yeah so uh, it's so funny because I felt like, I mean, I had the simplest lines in the world on Mandalorian. It was like, well, maybe not simple. Like, stay clear of launch tube, deploying fighter squadron, and that you know, it's a tongue twister for me. And I it just like couldn't do it. I, it. Like, couldn't get it out for whatever reason. Kept tripping over my tongue. All of that. And Peyton was so sweet, so patient, so encouraging. But I thought, I will never work for this man again. Like, there's no way he's going to hire me again. 
when I found out I was on Ant Man yeah. and that Peyton wanted me and Peyton wanted me back under his direction, I was blown away. But when you when you when that happens though too, is that a lot of conversations that are happening? You know, um, uh, uh, you know, to between between takes, is it just a relationship that you establish with him? That because from a lot of your roles, from what I've heard, is that. They're roles that start off with, okay, you got the role because we like the audition, but then they're extended. Mm -hmm. And because it's it's obviously in the performance, but it's obviously the personality as well too. So what are the, the conversations like offset? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's uh, obviously this is all a collaboration. So, you know, it's it's making sure that, you know, hey, this is what I think the scene is about. I um, want to make sure that you've, you know, you agree, but then it's also understanding that everyone on set is important and that you as the actor aren't the only person that matters. And yeah. um, so I, I love to just like, and maybe I'm bothering them. I don't know, but I love to go around and like chat with everybody. And clearly it's working. Well, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just love it because it's it, when you, especially on a show like Mandalorian where it's going multiple seasons or, um, you know, it branches out. They use a lot of the same people for Ahsoka, a lot of the same people for Andor. Um, it's like a family yeah. and you see that you feel that on set. And if you, if you aren't like connecting with that family, then it just doesn't, you know, it's kind of hard to stay on, I think. Yeah. And it's, but it's, it's, it's also, you know, it's gotta be, maybe it's not intimidating. I know, but for me, as I think about it with joining Ant-Man and quantum, quantum mania in the third film, radically different as far as tone in the first two but joining a cast that's been together i mean i guess it's in television sometimes you join a cast in the third fourth season whatever it might be and mm. you gotta so what is that like though you know like because you have this relationship with peyton and you come in and here's this crew that's been the actors that have been working together are they pretty inviting do you have to kind of break in and say hey guys i'm i it's because it's a major role mm. uh, and what what is that like uh working with this cast it is always a strange thing when you come in because you, you're like, oh, I don't know how other people work. I don't know if they want to be talked to. Yeah. I don't know. You know, are you allowed to look at them? <laughs> like, what are, what are their weird rules? Um, but for this one right away, everyone was just kind of joking around and, and uh, they make you feel welcome. I think a lot of people understand that, like, okay, this is the newbie that's on set. Let's bring her into the conversation. Yeah. Um, and that was always really important. And Peyton also... I mean, it's, it starts from the top, and, and he's he's just such a bright, happy personality. If if he is stressed, I not once felt it. Really? I mean, and, and that's a huge, it's a huge production. Yeah. And I'm sure they're getting notes from all sides, whatever, and he's just like, hey, Katie, how's it going? Always takes a time to chat with you. Um, takes time to, you know, really listen. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and... and talk you up to other people or whatever. I mean, it, it just, it does make you feel welcome. makes you feel like you belong there, which is like a huge, you know, everybody has imposter syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it makes you realize, oh, everybody's just like normal people here. <laughs> yeah, and it's because there's like, as you said, there's a lot of pressure when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe in general with the amount of films that they've done. And, and it's ultimately like a big television show with everything. Now, the one thing that I found really impressive was that what you don't see normally very rare are people inside of whether it's the universe or even a side universe being uh, in Marvel, like for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. and now a different role. Mm -hmm. You don't see that often. Yeah. So was that ever discussed? To, uh, like, well, she was already in that. She can't be in that. Does that ever come up ever? It's like, no. I, I mean, if anybody behind the scenes brought it up, I, I don't think uh, <laughs> uh, they obviously didn't make it a big deal. I think there was a point where they kind of decided that the MCU was separate. Mm-hmm. From, from what Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was doing. But then also, um, man, I'm trying to think, I feel like I've seen this happen with other actors before where, you know, they're in one, maybe like a smaller role or something, and they're like, no, we like well, you. David, David was, is, is plays David's, two roles. Yeah, come on. Yeah, David's David <laughs> yeah, David two completely yeah, yeah, different characters. 100%. <laughs> and I know that you guys had a good relationship on mm -hmm. set, and that was kind of my next question was that because he was somebody that played a different role inside of it he even though he'd been around it and he's so i mean whether it's dc or, or i mean I, I, exactly he was in something he, whether you look at something like the dark knight and then he's in yeah yes, and he's done it more than once. that's right yeah. right and then he's and then he's in the suicide squad so yeah. when you're talking to him and having that relationship does he give um any advice or does he you know lend some of his experience to you about working in these types of movies while you guys are on set yeah you know it's funny david's like he's so humble I, he doesn't really talk much about like yeah, I I assume if there was something I had to ask him, he would answer. Yeah. 
Um, but in terms of just unsolicited advice, no, I never got <laughs> any of that, which is great. I feel like that's like a good character trait. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, certainly if I felt like I was confused about something or whatever, I, I could, I could look at him. Um, what I just really, you know, especially seeing him as his previous character in Ant-Man, the way that he was able to take Veb and completely transform himself and, and like, wasn't worried about embarrassing himself or, or uh, anyone making fun of him or anything. Like, he went all out, yeah. and it w it paid off. I thought he was one of my favorite characters. He was pretty funny in the movie, yeah. for sure, and I love David. He's just a really, as you said, a humble, really good guy. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that was the experience for you guys in general, filming with all the... What, what did MODOK look like on set? Oh, yeah, yeah. So sometimes he just wasn't there. Yeah. Um, they had, like, a big white cutout sometimes that they would bring on, like, roll in. Yeah. And then I think... I. I don't think I was there on the days that they had um, they had a body double in like behind the thing rolling it around. <laughs> it was like there was a lot going on, so they had like a few different types of Modoc. But yeah, I kind of got to see what he looked. Yeah, like. I'm always I, even. I always look at like the, old, the way that the old prequels of the Star Wars were, were shot, and I always still when when you have the volume now mm. that I think it makes it easier. I, at least I would assume. Than just the blue screen, the green screen, but it's still got to be a little tough. The, the volume is really limiting because you can only shoot a certain POV. Like, so there's, you know, all of this uh, wall might be volume, and then behind you is a big chunk of open space. Yeah. So you have to be really creative with how you use that space because it is very limiting. And then, like, walk and talk scenes and, and volume, things like that are really, really difficult because you have to kind of, like, walk, reset start over, continue your conversation, reset, start over. It's it's super challenging. So in some ways it's limiting, but in other ways I think especially maybe after the fact, mm -hmm. and I'm definitely not a VFX person or anything, so I might be speaking way out of my head on this, but um, you know, the blue screen, everything has to be added right? You know, afterwards. So um, you have to create the world in your head. You have no idea what it's going to be like, and and that's what I mean. That's got to be. That's why it's tougher. So I and I so Ma for Mandalorian when you shot, I was because I know they did a lot of um, the volume for Mandalorian, but I know that also from where you were shooting, was it a lot of set stuff also? Yeah. So in the spaceship, yeah, it is um, it's mostly practical. We had a lot of you know they were playing with um, not playing with handing me. I was playing with um, <laughs> these like original pieces and yeah. they're trying to like have me walk around with them and fit them in and sometimes it works sometimes it didn't um so as much as they can have tactile there they do and you know especially when you're pushing buttons and stuff um they did use blue screen for a, a lot of like you know that's on the spaceship that mm -hmm. kind of thing um i think when they're using the volume it's mostly for like uh we're out in the world um massive world building stuff so with Mandalorian season three, I know there's only so much you can talk about with it coming up, and we're right around the corner from the the show in general. Yes. Yeah, what do you, I mean? I think that as we said, with the the roles that you've had in the past, whether it's Agents of Shield and uh, a, a countless amount of your roles, where the role has expanded, is that similar to what we we have going on here in Mandalorian as well too? Because I know you showed up in in with that season, you had a lot of you. It's an impact that you have. Like you're noticeable with the things that you're doing, and I think that's obviously what Peyton and other people have said. Hey, we want you to do more. Yeah, right. But, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think people just have to watch this season, <laughs> see what they think. <laughs> Total, good. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Um, and then I think that um, when it comes to this role in Ant Man, going back to that, I wanted to know like the relationship with with you and Cassie. Because that that really is there's so much that because it reminded me of a because I there was like an, an Avatar two feel to me as well and into this this world that, that that these fighters are so used to protecting their own doing their thing and the outsiders come in and you have to have that relationship in order to I guess work together and bond right mm -hmm. but it's really this relationship that you have with Cassie that I think is the ultimate that that without that th there's no help at the end yeah I think you know with um with Scott Ant-Man, uh, he's willing to just, out. okay, you don't want us, we're out. Yeah. Which is fair. Um, and then on the other side of things, you know, Janet kind of knows what's going on. She knows her responsibility, what she has to do, how she has to kind of resolve the situation. She left us high and dry. Yeah. 
Um, and it, yeah, in order for us to work together, it, yeah, it's, it, it had to be this person who came in, maybe not necessarily understanding the consequences of her actions. She had to learn those consequences apologize and then ask me <laughs> what was needed as opposed to saying, I'm going to help you. Right. Um, and yeah, that was something, uh, the, the scene where she frees me from prison, I think is this is like one of the first scenes that we actually shot oh, together. Like yeah. I think that was the first, one of the first days or the first day I showed up on set. And that's kind of when we realized that the Cassie Jintor relationship was going to be a little bit more important than like, uh, Jindor Torres vendetta against Janet or whatever right. that situation was. Well, you had said there's a ton, there was a ton of rewrites in inside of it that was always yeah. changing. Did that, did that actually, um, so at what point was it always that relationship or was there more? Because it seemed like to me, one of the things that I wanted to see more of was Janet's redemption interview because they set it up that, Oh, mm -hmm. she feels kind of bad about it. And I think that towards the end, it did, she, she still does stuff, but it wasn't that arctic because you mm -hmm. mentioned it, you say it like, you know, well, if it, once you find out that she's there, it's yeah. like, well, wait a minute, Janet's here? Yeah. And there's more to Janet. And I thought we were going to explore that a little bit more. Was that originally in there? No. And I kept, I'm like, what are we doing? And I, yeah. I think, you know, when I was talking to Peyton too, I think um, uh, Michelle was asking the same questions. <laughs> like, are we going to ever meet up or chat? And they kept trying and trying and trying. And finally, they, there was just too much going on. Yeah. Um, it, I, I don't envy them for, for having to piece this movie together because it's, two completely separate situations happening in the same movie with a whole new world, yeah. lots of different characters, we're world building, we're uh, adding plot, we're adding like the next phase, we've got all, it, it was just chaos. So I, I don't envy them at all. I think, you know, what we were able to, to piece together story-wise um, still makes the arc work, still makes the story work. Um, and then I think that at the end, uh, by thanking Cassie, I'm also forgiving Janet. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of just have to play it by ear. Maybe one day, hopefully, you know, maybe they'll write in uh, a scene where I get to say hi to Jan. <laughs> I just wanted to act with Michelle Pfeiffer. That's all I uh, wanted. <laughs> Michelle, I know, I know. And it's, it's, it is, it, and, and also look, one of the things that Marvel does very well is they introduce us in, 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 um, in bigger roles to new, newer talent. Right. And so when you were out there and I was like, that's a new role that I didn't know was coming. And obviously Jonathan Majors. So they introduced us to these two rising stars. So it was like a nice thing to do for, I, in general, from, I'm telling you my daughter when she, when I told her that you were coming in today, mm. she was just like, oh, she was the one who kicked ass. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah she was the one who kicked ass. And Jonathan Majors also, was there a lot of stuff that you got to do with him and like knowing that there's just something, I mean, Again, it's catching your eye. Like we mentioned with you, what you did. There's a there's a special talent of not of being able to take a role and then have someone say to you, "Come back, come back, come back." And it seems that's what both you guys did. So, and it's, it, I don't know. It's it's just something. How how was your relationship with him on set? I mean, I I pretty much uh, again, you, you're kind of sussing out how other actors work and, yeah. and everything. And and I said to Jonathan straight up, I was like, "Look, man, you look like you like to be in it the whole time." So I'm just going to kind of leave you alone. And he said, thank you. So um, it was cool to watch him work. It, it was the physicality that he yeah. brought was beautiful to watch. Um, the emotion that he brought, the seriousness that he brought to the role. Um, all of that was really, really great. And in a way, that weird sense, like, don't get me wrong, offset, we chatted. He's sure. Awesome. He's a lovely sure. guy. Sure. <laughs> but it felt right on set to have a little bit of separation. Yeah. Because he's my my arch enemy. Like he's he's the problem in my mind. Yeah, and you don't want to have like a great relationship with him yeah, in the middle. It yeah, makes right. it it makes it easy to I mean and, and also um it's intimidating yeah. to to separate yourself from somebody. And it's intimidating. He comes in with his boom box and he's like blaring music and ah! he like screams when he comes on set. That's and, great. Um <laughs> so you you gotta be intimidated by Kevin. Yeah. You have to be. So I kind of liked that. Um, as a separation for us. And I think it helped feed into the intensity of, of uh, what we were going for. I, I don't know how much, you know, I don't, I don't watch takes or anything. I yeah, don't yeah. like to see myself on camera. Yeah, same with him. So do you, so do you, did you watch the actual, sc the, the, the film when it was at one the do. premiere? You did, I okay. do, because my philosophy is like, it's A, it's not about me. I want to see what they came yeah. up with. I want to see... Um, 
you know, I, I want to see the background. I want to see everything. Love that. I don't know if I'll watch it again. Yeah. Um, I, my friends dragged me to it again, and I just the whole time I'm like, every time I'm on screen, I'm like, I hate it, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how many um, people, are, I mean, yeah, he, he he says the same thing. There's so many people that don't like to watch themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's you ever, like, I think there's, like, a psychological thing to it, too, and I, I recently uh, saw this, uh, this guy giving... Um, kind of the explanation, but when you hear your own voice, yeah, it doesn't sound like what you think you sound like. Of course, like. yeah. And you're like, ugh, that's me. And it's kind of the same seeing yourself. I understand. You're like, oh God, that's me. Ugh. Well, <laughs> we hope to see a lot more of you. And okay. I think that we will. So A Mandalorian Season 3, it's right around the corner. Ant-Man and the Wasp is out now, ladies and gentlemen. Katie, thank you so much for joining us, mm -hmm. and I hope to see you again. Yeah, yeah, it's been All great. Right. All right, Green back Jack. to me, me. <laughs> Green Chef, I mean, this is the one that people have been asking me about a lot. They've been asking me about it a lot because they're like, hey, I noticed that you lost weight. Is that true? I said, yes, it is true. And I've been really using this Green Chef once day. And as I mentioned earlier, I only take sponsors on that I believe in. So I tried them out. And man, and what I, I mean, look, they, they send you menus and things that are very easy for you to make. I make my own stuff also with the stuff that they send. I've been making like these stir fries which is really great. Um, Green Chef is the number one meal kit. It's for eating well with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. And they have options for every type of lifestyle. Their recipes feature premium proteins, seasonal organic produce, and they have sourced sea seafood. You can expand your palate with unique farm fresh ingredients like figs, dates, artichokes, so much. Green Chef is the only meal kit that is both carbon and plastic offset. They offset 100% of their carbon footprint, as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. 100% of the seafood meets the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch Rankings of Certified Best Choice or Good Alternative. Green Chef, you're re you're not, you are reducing your food waste by up to 38% versus grocery shopping. I've definitely noticed a a, a lot. A, I mean, the, the I couldn't tell you. I The freaking chicken that they sent. It was so tasty. It was so good. They offer 10-minute lunches. They have each week's menu includes two convenient low prep and nutritious lunch recipes. And they're ready in just 10 minutes. It's true. No cooking required. Perfect for when you're on the go and press for time in the office. You can eat well at lunchtime too. So if you want to head on over and you want to do it, you gotta go go to greenchef.com slash thing sixty. And do you know why it's thing sixty? To get sixty percent off. Plus free shipping. That was the deal. It's like 60% off. 60% off plus free shipping. You got to go to greenchef.com slash thing 60. We have a lot of uh, different sponsors here and ones. And I saw this I saw this comment the other day. Someone who's a, a fan of the show, and I'm not going to give him the troll voice because he doesn't deserve it. He's someone who watches the show all the time. And he said, hey, man, listen, sometimes uh, I, I got to talk to you about your sponsors. It's like you're, you're enthusiastically selling all your sp sponsors. Well, yeah. Because I only take sponsors that we like and that we think work well for the audience. And that's why Magic Mind fits in the way that it does. I'm telling you, man, like I have, I don't, so the first time we had Magic Mind, it was with, during SEN. And Brett had, um, had, Brett was the one that was using it. He, he was raving about it. And I hadn't had a chance to try it. And they reached out to me. And I said, look, yeah, I have, I have problems with the, a lot of times kind of procrastination and my mind goes all over the place. And I, my biggest problem is I try, I focus on 7,000 things at once and they're like, give us a shot. And I said, all right, well, I got to try it first before I start telling the audience about it. Cause that's just not what I do. I want to, I want to make sure that I really like it. And if I don't like it, I got to be honest with you guys. And, and I tried it and I found myself focusing and I found myself more so. Uh, and I, and in, a couple of times before I went to, um, I'm, I get tired uh, at the, uh, you know, the, the end of the day when I'm trying to work and I'm like, and I'm all over the place and my, and I've been able to just kind of focus a little bit more. It's it just been, it's it had about three days, three or four days. I think that when I really started seeing the, the effects of it, you just do like kind of one shot of it. It tastes pretty good too. Um, anyway, so if you want to check it out, it's the links in the description. It's magic mind. And you can use my code Christian20 to get 43% off your first subscription in the next uh, 10 days. You go to magicmind.co slash Christian and use that code Christian20 to get, uh, yeah, 43% off. Take a look, you know. 
All right, again, that's Katie O'Brien. So make sure you, if you haven't checked out the Mandalorian season three trailer, go ahead and check that out. But, um, and then obviously Ant-Man uh, and the Wasp Quantumania is out in theaters now. All right, back to my friends here. All right, Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy are, are once again partnering up and they're doing a boy band film. Deadpool star Ryan Reynolds has set up the feature comedy Boy Band at Paramount Pictures, which is going to see him reunite once again with his freaking collaborator and filmmaker Sean Levy. Details of the project are under wraps, but the film is being described as a comedy about a boy band reunion movie. Musical act reunions have been the subject of some successful laughter uh, of the late, including the well-reviewed Peacock series G Girls Forever. Reynolds is attached to star and produce, and he also co-wrote it with Jesse Andrews. Um, all right, we actually had a chance to talk to Ryan Reynolds about this. I can't. I, uh, I'll, I don't have any video of it, but I, I can play the actual thing. Hold on a second. Hey, Ryan, how are you? Oh, hi. How are you? Oh, it's nice to have you on the show. Sorry, Finally. I'm a little out of breath. I just got back from dance rehearsal. Oh, is it? Well, wait a minute. So that's kind of what I was going to ask you about. I was going to ask you about this new project that's out there. Is this a, um, are you starring as a boy band member? Well, I might be producing it or I might be a member. We don't know yet. The important thing is that uh, you hydrate, you get your rest, and um, if you miss a step, you're fired. It's more like a reality show we're doing. Oh, it's pretty harsh, but I'll, I'll tell you this. The one thing I wanted to ask you is that would there be, is this going to be based off Backstreet Boys? Is this going to be based off any of the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the big bands out in Japan? In sync. It's the oh. only band that exists. Breaking story here, guys. Mm -hmm. story. JC Chazay's in there. Is he? Oh, yeah. And he's, we're going we're gonna to deep fake him on every other character. Okay. We call them characters. They are people, but we call them characters in this story. The first act is going to be all me. Second act, all JC. And the third act, we'll tie it all together to be me and JC. Oh, wow. Well, I know that we're have you for a limited time, so let me ask you this last question. Sean mm -hmm. Levy, once again, doing another thing. He, now, the rumor is he's supposed to do a Star Wars movie. How's he going to balance this and the uh, and, and this boy band thing? Well, what? slap my ass and call me Betty White. We'll work it out. He'll deal with it, okay? <laughs> all right, fair enough. Anyways, Thank Blake's you. calling. Give me a second. All right, that's mm -hmm. fine. Thank you so much, Ryan <laughs> Reynolds, everybody. Nice to have the great Ryan Reynolds on the show. Those two guys do so much shit together. It's like, why? I mean, I guess it's like the, the comedic kind of Scorsese and uh, De Niro. Scorsese. I want in on that boy band i was such a big boy band yeah oh, in sync was like you got the that, hookup that man. was it for me yeah i worked with ryan before ryan if you're watching you need some moves I'll, I'll, uh... sounds like a funny premise to me it does yeah it could work I mean, you know what movie was also played in that premise that i thought was underrated what was the andy sandberg one that uh the one he did, it was about the the, the oh. band. It was about the boy. It was, was it fame? Uh, what was it called? The hell was that movie called? But he did. But it came out. And I remember seeing it and laughing my ass off on. It. I thought it was pretty damn funny. Was it a uh, Andy Samberg band movie? I guess that'll that'll work, right? That'll pull it up. So it probably will. Pop star. Pop star. Pop star. Never stop stopping. That did you guys see that one? I, I did think it. I did on like in parts. Like yeah. When you flipped through the channels. I was surprised because I wasn't expecting much from it. I thought it was pretty funny. It didn't do very well, but I I remember. Um, yeah, do you were you around when he was he was on the circuit for a while out here? I never met him. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I did a couple of shows with him at the Improv before, and we used to do fucking laundry at this place before. <laughs> and I remember like, remember like I'd done a, a this is place right on like Beverly. What's crazy is it was on Beverly and like Sweetser, and it was the same spot where they shot you. Do you remember Lethal Weapon pretty well? Yeah, yeah. you know when when Riggs gets shot through the, the glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. there, was that, really? I was on that street. I wouldn't find that out until years later. I'm like, I used to do my laundry there, <laughs> but um, but yeah, but Sandberg used to do it. I remember thinking, I, yeah, I saw Andy last week, and then I saw him as the Swedish chef a week later on the thing. I'm like, son of a bitch. He's a, yeah, he's obviously. I not noticed a bad your, Poster up there with Sebastian and Brett Ernst. That's is that right after the um, Wild West comedy tour? That was right around the same time. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah. It was uh, 2003. Um, so we went. Yeah, Brett. Brett was. Brett got me into the store. Brett was the one who. Oh, nice. Yeah, Brett. Brett and I performed a bunch of times at like Dublin's, and we we, mm. we performed at. Um, Back in those Dane Cook days. 100. percent Yeah, that's where that's where he started. Kind of. I remember. It, he. I mean, that was where he started blowing up in L.A. Was at Dublin's, yeah, and I yeah. was. Yeah, I was there for a lot of that, and then. Um, but yeah, but Brett had said to me because we used to perform at this place called Luna Park on, um, on like Robertson. It was everybody used to go there, and it, it was such a great room. But um, but I met Brett there, and Tripoli, Tripoli had gotten past there. I think like a couple of years before me, or a couple of Charmin Musk before me. And then um, Brett comes in, and he's like, "Hey, you know, I got a couple of recommendations, and I'll I'll put you on the uh, I'll, I'll get me and somebody else that he recommended." And I always talked about this. Did you? 
Did you, Mitch, did you get passed by Mitzi? I didn't get passed. I don't. I just, you know. Oh, you just promote. Yeah, promote, just promote oh, okay, they cool. They don't really put promoters on that wall. I, <laughs> it's tough. No, no, it's tough. I mean, because yeah. I've seen a lot. Of, I've seen a lot of really, really funny dudes who were yeah, who yeah, promoted yeah. that just because of that. And I think it's it's just like the old Mitzi, the old Mitzi rule, right? Like yeah. so saying, like Steve Simone couldn't get pat, couldn't get passed for. He's one of the funniest guys on the planet. He couldn't get passed forever because he would because he would tour with Paulie. Oh really? And she was, you know, with Paulie, I don't want to make a special favor. Oh, you know, okay. and it's like yeah. I feel like these days you got to either hang out on Mondays for like or the, during the potluck for yeah. like three years every night, or be famous as hell, and then you get passed. It's a damn I mean, politics change inside of the clubs, yeah. right? Yeah, it's true. But um, but anyway, um, yeah, I don't know where we were going with that. But I, oh yeah, the, but 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 like I wanted to ask you because you, you didn't get it, we went off track with it. But has Rogan or any of those guys seen your seen your deep fakes? The um, yeah, the, I think Theo's shared a bunch of okay. them. Um, you got a fuzzy on your face for Thanks. your shirt. Thank you. See, that's a friend. Um, that's a yeah, friend. That's a friend right there, yeah. dude. Um, you think he's not cheating. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. That's my favorite. There you go. Um, Stop it. But, uh, yeah, they, they, Nikki Glazer just shared one. Theo does it. Whitney does it. Yeah, they all seem to like them. I want to get, as I want to make sure that for, again, we're talking about this. You can just, it's just your name, do your Instagram handle, right? Brian At Monarch. Brian Monarch. And his is I am Joe Gaudet. Yeah, so you can see him. You see them both right there. So it's like, if you go. So go there, by the way, let them know that you found them from the show, but also um, make sure you check it out. And you can find it on, on TikTok and Instagram. And I was telling Brian last night, I was scrolling through TikTok like everybody does. And right as I scroll, I see like that teenage filter that's going on. Oh, Brian hey. just did this video for it. Oh, yeah. And right as I do it, I, I see it and like his text pops up. And I was like, oh, fucking, that's, that's fucking weird. That's weird. So, um, but anyway, um, yeah, let's see if there's one more, one more story we can talk about. And we'll let you guys know you guys got it. Bail. But let's uh, let's see. Here it is. This is the oh yeah Creed. I was going to ask you. Yeah. I, I saw that you uh, saw it and you you enjoyed it, right? I liked it. Yeah, it's really it's really good. I have. Did you have any uh, emotional? Um, part of me doesn't want to see it because it's one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. I, yeah. I it, it it took everything sucks. in me. Like the legacy. I just I feel terrible. Yeah, it's like, not. But I I. When in going, I'm not going to blame Michael B. Jordan for this, and I'm not going to blame Ryan Coogler, who is, a, I think, he's a producer on the movie as well, too, um, because I don't think they were involved in this war between Winkler and uh, no. and, and Stallone. Yeah. I think Winkler's kind of a scumbag, to be honest with you, what he, yeah, what he did. Yeah, it sounds like it. I yeah. love Rocky. I love Creed, so I am probably going to see it. And uh, it, does, it holds. It holds up. It definitely holds up. And, and yeah, 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 for sure. And I think that his style is very interesting. They do something in the final fight. Not spoiling it, but like yeah. for that, it's it's a definite creative choice. And it, the fights are the most different fights out of the entire franchise. It, it's, you know, what, I think that a lot of people they're very like in style, in the ring kind of anime I heard almost. That like they were taking a different approach. Yeah, it's like anime, but meets. It's almost like you feel like you're playing a video game at one mm. point, which I think works for the majority of it. Then there's one creative move that he makes at the very end fight that people are either going to go that's genius i get it what it is and be like yeah but it went on too long i could see both sides of it but it's a really good movie i thought that there's a couple i'm a boxing kind of mma head when it comes to like the technicality of rankings and shit so like the things that bother me might not bother yeah, yeah, yeah. you but um but overall i think that the i think it's a really good it's a really good movie it might it holds up with the second one for sure yeah. yeah, Stallone loves the deep fakes. By the way, he followed me. He That's only great. 180 people, man. I was like, what? So he does that because I was when right after Rambo Five came out, um, I had seen it and I I loved it. I had such a great time with him. We talked at my the show I used to do was called Collider Live, and we did a sh and we started talking about it. And somehow he got a hold of it and he posted the clip of oh, me nice. talking okay. about Very it. Very cool. Yeah, and he's that's like, the only Rambo I've seen, believe it or not. That's the la that last, last blood? That's the last one? The last that's one. the very last one. I think one. I saw yeah. the, the last dude's two. Heart, the heart. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. the last awesome. two. Yeah. I need to go back and watch the originals. I'm sure they're amazing. I, I, I don't know. I got into a thing when, like, sometimes I'll rewatch stuff because I have to do it for work, but sometimes I'll just go, like, I, I rewatched the entire Sopranos. You know, I watched, I rewatched um, the, I wound up watching Rambo recently. I'm like, one, two, and three, just fire through them in the Rocky movies, too. It's just those are, those are, it's my love for these movies in general, man. How, how are the original Rambos? Oh, I love them. They're great. Okay. Yeah, the, I'll check them out. You know, the book, though, First Blood, the book is... And it was based on a book. It yep. was. It came out in 1972, mm. and it was way more, like, kind of inside of Rambo's thoughts. Mm. And Rambo dies in the, in the book. Really? Oh, yeah, because, I didn't even know and, he died. Yeah, wow. because what's his... Uh, the, the, what's his... Brian Dennehy? Brian, I was going to say Brian Dennehy's character. So Brian Dennehy's character is, is kind of pretty much a, just a dick throughout the whole movie. In the book, you kind of sympathize with him because he's also a war veteran, but from mm. the Korean War. 
So like he's going, oh. and he starts to respect Rambo as he's kind of doing this right. hunt. But Rambo in the in the movie, he he only kills somebody like by accident, like when the guy's in self defense oh, falls out of the tree. Yeah, yeah. Falls out so of I the didn't hunt. kill anybody. Yeah, right. You got to right, squeeze right. a book into two hours. You yeah, gotta yeah, get yeah. Rid of But in the book, stuff. he kills everybody, dude. Oh, okay. He's in the, like when he breaks out of the out of the the station. In the movie, he punched someone in the face. He guts motherfuckers and runs out. Like it's like he's you know from right away he's the bad. He's not bad yeah. guy, but he, he he's snapped trained, he and you're like, yeah, yeah you, you, there's no redemption for this guy anymore. He just went back to being a trained killer. But there's redemption for Stallone's Rambo. You know what broke my heart this week, man? Did you see Stallone's post with the script? No. Which one? Which of Creed? Rocky Seven. It says on the front. Oh shit! He goes, this is the the, the treatment slash screenplay for Rocky Seven that you're never going to see because of blah blah Wankler blah. Wankler again? I was, yeah, I was like, oh my. Did he God. just post that recently? It's this week. It yeah. was this week it's because like if you go to the, one of his last posts. It'll be there. You, you got to be careful though with his posts because they're gone real quick. Because I think he, uh, and then and then Andrew Dice Clay does that, dude. He goes off on people, dude. And, and then, then I think it. Eleanor's like, delete that, delete. like. I'll tell you what he's doing brilliantly. Are we talking the, about the pictures? Oh, wait, wait. The best when he. Oh, oh, I did love you that want? Man. Did you want the picture? We were talking about that last <laughs> it's, night, and it's he's doing it for him, and that's, that's why. It. It's and funny. maybe him and Eleanor. He's doing yeah. it for him and Eleanor because they're probably cracking it, each other up. You and nobody yeah. knows, but what I like. He's it's catching on because people are like, I do want the picture. It's you, and they yeah. know. Oh, I was like, it's oh, great it's when great. he walked. He walked into that plant store. He's like, you know, I, would, I don't normally do this, but I'll do it for you. For you, I'll do it. I don't it. know. The, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's the holidays. You know, yeah. Dude, it's the, the day laughter died is what pretty much got oh, me into comedy. Fuck like, yeah, it, it's, that's yeah. You, you're about as funny as a bottle of milk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> It's so good. Um, yeah, dude, we could, we, guys, we could do this forever, man. This yeah. is a lot of fun talking to you guys. You should come back for sure when well, you're in back in town. Yeah, and you should come in whenever you want, obviously. Um, guys, make sure, once again, go check out both Joe at I am Joe Godet at his, uh, what, everywhere, right? Twitter? I Instagram? am Joe Godet on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and then just look up Joe Godet on Facebook. Don't, yeah. don't do the, oh, let me, let me, let me add you and look at your kids pictures don't i don't use that one use the <laughs> and, and brian monarch same thing at brian monarch you can check yeah. him out all those platforms but yeah. um and then yeah if you're in la what's your next uh, show that you're promoting um this tuesday is sold out actually already man it's uh you know matt reif no i don't think so he's blown i've never seen a comic blow up faster than him okay you're gonna know him pretty soon okay man. he's just anyway it sold out like two weeks ago i was just like wow. this is crazy that's great uh but the next one after that is thursday at the uh hollywood improv friday at the hollywood improv i got Get a lot going on two or three a week over there yeah love it all right guys well thanks for coming in i appreciate it and once again thank you to our sponsors also thank you to um to katie o'brien and on monday Katie Sackoff from The Mandalorian on the show, so make sure you check it out. All right, guys, we'll see you on the flip side. Peace out. <laughs>